Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I am Mahesh Chandar. I am Principal Scientist at Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Ijat Nagar in UP. I will be talking about living conditions for animals, waste management and labeling of organic products. So, we, it is very important that under organic management, animals should be kept well. Their living conditions should be very good. So, how we can maintain very good living condition for animals? So, an, an organic livestock or organic poultry producer must create and maintain living conditions that accommodate natural behavior and health of the animal, paying full regard to their evolutionary adaptations, behavioral needs and animal welfare issues with respect to nutrition, housing, health, breeding and rearing. So, it is very important that when we are keeping animals, they should be kept well. In the conventional production system also, animals should be kept well there are standards how to keep them well. So, it is not that they are animal, they can be kept just like that whatever way we want, it is not. In case of organic management of livestock, these standards are well written with respect to nutrition, how they should be fed, how they should be kept in housing, how, the, how their health care should be taken care of, how breeding should be care of and the, how they should be reared. So, there are detailed, uh, there are detailed standards under prescribed under national program for organic production. So, there are written standards for that audit and certification agency, they verify that these standards have been complied with in order to verify any organic livestock unit that it is certified organic. If some of these standards related to their living conditions are not maintained, not kept, so this uh, facility or this organic system of livestock, dairy or poultry will not be eligible for cert or certification of organic production. So, the living condition must include access to outdoors. So, the animal should have access to outdoor. It is not that all the time animals will be kept inside the shelter said. So, they should have opportunity to go out and graze around or look around and walk around. So, they should be having facility of shade in case there is hot environment outside and they want to, they are in need of shade, there should be opportunity that they can go inside the shade, they can, they can rest out there. The shelter, so shelter may not be necessary, they are generally kept in open under organic system, but to prevent from rains and the heat, heat waves outside, so there should be provision of shelter where if needed animal can go inside, fresh air all the time if we are keeping animal inside the shed and then there is no opportunity to have fresh air, it may compromise their health conditions and then it may yield to some health issues. So, there should be opportunity for livestock that they get fresh air all the time. Direct sunlight suitable to the species. So, there should be also opportunity when we are keeping animal all the time inside the shed and there is no opportunity for them to have access to sunlight or to enjoy the sunlight. Sometime in winter months, they would like to have direct sunlight and they, they will, it will be pleasant for them to stay in the sun when this is a temperate climate or then the cold climate. And then access to pasture for ruminants. So, that is again very important that whenever, so all the time they cannot be fed cut and carry method of grass, so keep feeding them in the measures, so keeping uh, at the at the side inside, so they can have opportunity of grazing. So, there should be some grazing area, especially in case of the ruminants, they should for certain hours of a day, they should go around and they, they can graze and open. Farmers should see that there is a sufficient free movement, this is very important and especially since tethering is not allowed in the organic system and for that reason they should have free uh, uh, opportunity for the free movement. They can go around wherever they like inside certain specified area. 
accessibility of fresh air and natural daylight be, as i have already said and protecting animals from harsh climatic condition heat cold and rain this is very important that we should not we should have provision so that they can be protected from extreme heat conditions cold conditions and rain so th for that as i told previously there should be a uh, uh, shelter or shed wherein they can go inside under such situations of course open air is uh, needed but in under these situations they may need shelter so shelter should be properly prepared for them wherein they can be kept and animals should have free access to fresh water to meet its requirement so it is very important that they should have fresh water available for them so it's not that any dirty water is being given to animals to drink often people do like that so for themselves they need good quality water tap water or something like that even bottled water we consume but when question comes of animals we generally avoid giving them good good water because of the reason many a time it is not available in sufficient quantity but when we are going for organic production of animals organic livestock husbandry we are following we should have a provision of a of a good quality of water again another thing is herd animals are not kept individually sometimes some animals they live in herds they live together so like sheep herd you might have seen that they move together and there sometimes pigs swine they they move together such animals should not be kept alone in isolation they should be kept together tethering is generally not allowed in organic farming tethering means tying uh, tying the animals with a rope generally in our systems in villages we see animals are tied with a rope and with some kind of tree or some poles and all like that but that is that is not a that is not allowed in the organic system if tethering is to be done it should allow the animal to move freely with sufficient space sometimes the rope is very very small and they are not able to move much here and there so even if under certain condition if tethering is required we should see that it should be rope should be long enough overcrowding shouldn't be done in order to avoid conflict behavior and associated health problem it is very important standard that is should be wherever we are keeping the animal there should not be overcrowding there should be limited stocking density should be as per the space allowance made because for every species there is prescribed space limit that that npop document can be seen and refer to for what category of animal if it is a bull there is a different requirement if it is a meek animal or if it is a calf how much area it requires so that that should be complied with suppose if it is not complied with certification agency or auditing uh, agent audit, auditing persons they will when they will inspect your farm they will look into how much space has been provided to the particular category of animal so if it is not complied uh, complied with it will be documented by them that this particular standard is not complied by the producer so it will go against the interest of the uh, organic producer and also what happens when we are keeping many uh, animals together so some conflict behavior they start fighting there is a fighting and they injure others so we have to see that there should not be overcrowding and also it it creates sometime health problems because when you are keeping so many animals together so it creates some kind of a health problem also some the, uh, the air quality got deteriorated and all so again one more thing is that in this regard that different species of animals should not be kept together and also it should be seen that as far as possible animals of the same age group should be kept together it's not that many of the calf and adult animal and all they are kept together in, in at one place so it will be good that if they are segregated as per their age and also as per the species it should not be that so pig and cows are kept together it is not permitted under the organic systems one should see ensure that as far as possible as far as possible the same same species should be kept so now another question comes the housing how living condition when we are talking about housing is very important consideration so nowadays efforts are being made to make housing very comfortable for animals if you look at this figure so enclosures have been made and wherein each cow has having sufficient space to move around when they they want to come out they can come out move around 
and and is if it is comfortable outside they can remain outside when they feel uncomfortable outside they can go inside the shed so this kind of likewise many different kind of sheds are being designed even in the conventional animal husbandry it's not that it is very important housing is that important in organic production system it is also very important in conventional production system it's not that we should not get that impression that under the organic management only housing should be comfortable housing should be comfortable in every kind of uh, animal production system be it conventional or organic so it's a, or be it traditional so always the, of course livestock producers they take good care of their animals many of them but sometimes they may not be aware of how the prescribed standard how much exactly the space given in the traditional uh, animal husbandry though the farmers were not aware about the space requirement they used to keep animals under good conditions if you go to rural areas during winter months especially in north india where the, the, there is a cold climate so they cover their animals with the uh, some some kind of a clothing and some kind of a coverage and some kind of even the woolen material so that they they can minimize the uh, cold being felt by the animals just prevent from the cold temperature they protect the animal from the so in the winter months so likewise it should be seen that suppose if this a, is a house some kind of they, a certain time of then they need some kind of a bedding material especially when they give birth cows give birth to calf and all at that time they need they need to have some kind of a material uh, this is to be spread in the cattle shed inside so that they, they come and also in the winter month they need to warm up so so one should see that how we can keep under very good or healthier condition and protect them from extreme heat extreme extreme cold or the rain conditions and all that thing it is very important if you are having a a shelter which is very uh, very closed and there is no open air going inside that will create some kind of a health issues and animal which need to be avoided so we have to design different housing condition even for the maybe it is a pig maybe it is a cow maybe goat goat sheep poultry so you you should look at these pictures you know in the in case of poultry production caged poultry is not permitted so caged housing is not also permitted for rabbits so sometime our conventional production system has encouraged keeping animals inside the cages you might have seen in a big industrial uh the uh, uh, poultry production systems so there are layer after layer of the cages wherein uh, poultry is kept in a very small space so where poultry doesn't get chance to move around also so they are not kept they simply lay, lay eggs or they maintain so that more poultry birds can be kept in a very limited space instead but that is not permitted under organic system in the organic system poultry need to be kept in the open so the kind of a backyard system of poultry what we have in the villages when the small scale poultry production is there so poultry houses should also be very convenient when the, the lighting requirements generally 14 hours of light they need so it should be provided so then you you look at it should be bedding material and all these things so it, it should be properly uh, uh, prepared so we if you are going for any kind of animal production we have to see that it is uh, for the convenience of the animals if you look at so this particular picture i took it in 1996 this photo in uh, in denmark at that time itself i saw that uh, organic pig production was and they had created a house here a small house here and also they were having a, a small pond somewhere here it must say. so that you know you might have seen pigs they have a rooting behavior so they poke their nose into the water for different reason it is their behavioral needs so what happens whenever you are keeping some pigs you have to create a pond inside that facility so that they can perform their natural behavior because the standard says that animals should be able to perform its natural behavior pigs one of the natural behavior is that rooting behavior to its a root down they put they put their nose inside the water or mud and all these thing or in search of food and to satisfy their behavioral need they have to perform that rooting behavior so idea is that if they are restricted if they are not provided with this kind of a uh, water pond and all these thing they will be deprived of opportunity of performing their rooting behavior so that will put them in stress so an stressed animal 
it is likely to uh, lead to toxins being produced inside their body because they, they feel stressed because they are not able to perform their natural behavior, that routine behavior. So, it will uh, it put them in the stressful situation and the stressed animal may have some toxins built up in their body. So, so when an animal, this meat of this particular pig which is not able to perform its natural behavior. So, it may have contained some toxin inside its body because it will be stressed, its, its productivity potential will also may go down. So, then we should see that animal is happy. Somebody may say that if at all this animal is going to be killed for the meat purpose, but it does not mean that if we are going to eat it anyway by killing it and we should keep them whatever way we like it. It is not the case in case of organic management. Also that is true in case of conventional, but here the standards are being followed very strictly that animals should not be put into stress because of the lack of performing it is a natural behavior. So, here you see suppose a pig want to go inside and feeling uncomfortable outside, he can move inside this shelter. So, if this kind of arrangement is made, this is very good. If you have seen in the conventional pig production system, what we call intensive production system. So, their pigs are sometimes not allowed to move much. They are confined to a small enclosures, wherein they are sometime I have seen, they are not, uh, not allowed to even stand up. So, when they are standing and moving around, they, they, there is a energy requirement, they lose and they are not able to accumulate fat. So, such a system it looks very cruel by because of the now animal welfare standards are very strict even in the conventional animal husbandry, they are well documented welfare standards and with the gradually these standards are further refined in favor of the animal welfare. Animal welfare is very important in organic animal husbandry. Some people say organic production system is more of a animal welfare oriented. That is why a stocking density also say that in one hectare land, we can keep only certain number of animals. It is not that if we are having only one hectare land, we will have so much uh, allows. Earlier standard says that in one hectare land, two cows only, but that is not very strictly followed. So, it depends on the size of animal also, size of animal. Say, if you look at the exotic animals, they are having large size some breeds are there, Holistian fusion for example, it is a large size animal which gives more than 30 liters of milk, sometime up to 60 liters of milk. Such animals are large size, they may have more land requirement to have food and feed, feed and fodder grown for them. But some of the Indian breeds are very small, you must have heard Bechur breed, it is very small. So, likewise many other breeds are a small size in comparison to the exotic breeds. That is why we say that the we have to keep animals which are well adapted to the local production environment. So, as I told that these pigs are certain number, it is not that, so we can double the number all of a sudden, this is the some limited area. So, a wire is there, well there is a, there was a mild current where they can, they, they can go out and then they, they are given prescribed feed, where the feed is there for their maintenance. You know animals at different stages of their life, they need different feed. If a recently parturient uh, saw, so if it she has given uh, delivered uh, these uh, babies, so pigs, so these piglets are there, so her requirement of feed would go up. Accordingly, what should be fed at that particular level or say example fattening. So, when we are preparing some animal for so to for fattening or for meat purpose, so they are given that particular diet. Uh, animal which has delivered, or, uh, the delivered, so they need at that time different diet because then we are in case of cows, we are drawing milk out of it. So, we need to feed accordingly that diet to this animal. So, these you, you look at, so what kind of a, and then, then you see the kind of a pig you have seen production in our vicinity in our area, sometime they are eating garbage. Many a time you will see pig is considered, that is why pig is sometime people feel that they are dirty animal. Pig are not that dirty animal, they are uh, as good as animal as any other animal. So, it is not that, since we are providing them very bad living condition, 
that is why and because we compel them we are not feeding them well and as per their requirement we are not giving them feed that is why they are compelled to go out on the street and eat garbage or all kind of a garbage they poke their nose and they perform the, in the garbage they go and eat whatever is available it is it is not there by choice they are eating it because since these pigs are hungry they are not fed well that is why they are doing going out in the street and eating all kind of a stuff which is available poor quality stuff and which they should not use eat but they are compelled to eat because we are not feeding them well so you look at the very good keeping condition organic system here you, you can look into they are feeling very good they are able to move around and they are very happy likewise in case of poultry as i told previously they they are not kept inside the cages so if you go to any an uh, industrial scale poultry production conventional poultry production they are kept in the cages so it will look if you visit them sometime will feel that it looks very cruel that is such a small space so nice but the organic management it is very welfare oriented so they they are provided freedom to move around wherever they like so like that so likewise we have to devise and here also they do have a pasturing ability uh, uh, opportunity if they they can they can find the insects and they can eat on insects sometime people have made some kind of transportable uh, mechanism where poultry is transported from this pasture area to another area where they can find more insects so likewise some people are devising that some kind of a plantation areas you know rubber plantation coconut plantation palm oil plantation generally uh, the, uh, nothing else is grown inside so some people suggest that why not to enclose that area with the wire mess and keep poultry where they can pasture on insect and what is available there and that can be a very good one rather than buying market feed and all medicated feed and all this kind of thing so people are coming up with the production system which are more close to the nature and where this this uh, these uh, because poultry birds and if you look at our backyard our desi poultry birds they are so quite used to uh, roam uh, moving around on the, in the open area and searching themselves for food so they 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 eat on the insects and like that so it is it is a kind of a system which they like so we have to provide that kind of opportunity to animals so i i got chance to visit some of the organic livestock production facility in germany some years back so you know that again i am saying that in the intensive pig production system they are kept in a very small enclosures here you look at they are moving open a lot of space has been given some people will say that to for the animals which are going to be killed ultimately for meat purpose we are going to consume them why to provide such a area why to waste such a land so the concept of animal welfare oriented animal husbandry will fail if we are not loving this cause because we know that when we are keeping like pigs like that they are happier pigs so we as we want ours for ourselves happy condition we should also create happier situation for animals that is why they need to be kept like that open and all these things maybe we are going to kill them for our own uh, consumption but it does not mean before when so far they are living they should be kept in a very poor condition very unhealthy condition or maybe in a stressful condition in a closed enclosures so be it pigs be it goats you know they do have a browsing tendency and then they pick up they they want to eat the tree leaves like that by climbing up so if you if you are providing this thing these goats will feel happy they they are out in the open so if you if you go around if you go to rural areas anywhere you will see this is a common sight in india the goat are browsing like that so they 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 are browsing, they are they are finding their food like that they are they sometime climb up to tree also they are putting their front legs in some of the tree so these the, you see the, these they were kept like that in a open stage and then is stocking must be as per their requirement it's not that in a enclosure we can give any number of goats there should not be crowding as i told in the beginning it should be good enough to have free movement and there should be stocking should be as much as the prescribed uh, space requirement which are for every species of animal there is a prescribed is a requirement now if you look at these photographs so here again yeah, these animals are kept like this so whenever they want to come out they can out on this is this open 
some uh, some uh, direct sunlight is there so and whichever animal is not liking this he is ha that animal is having choice to go inside the shade so this this uh, this augurs well under organic system so this is a kind of a one very good housing system which is uh, which is very much preferred under organic management also you look at the this housing system this is open it is not very expensive also it is not very expensive so some the uh, wooden uh, this thing poles have been used making then animals are having free movement they have not been tethered here also animal has not been tethered by rope they are having freedom to so they, they can go inside they can come out they can have sunlight they can have shade this choice is here this choice is also there you see the behind there is this is a shelter uh, shade shaded area or shelter is there so when they want to come out they can come out they can move around and they can go uh, over and above this thing they should be let loose some time to go out in the grazing area for the certain period in a day sometime it is written as 4 4 hours a day so they should have a, especially in case of ruminants they should go out and in the grazing area that will serve the purpose of exercise also that movement that is also very important here also you know some shaded trees are there and this opening so maximum comfort is uh, this cows are getting so so this is about the cow sometime uh, we keep uh, particular species we discriminate some other species especially pig uh, in many a time we see pig in roaming uh, moving around here and there eating garbage as i told previously but here you see the nice uh, shelter has been made and only two pigs have been kept inside this, this enclosure if and then it it may be seen that whether it is as per the space uh, prescribe for this uh, keeping two pigs inside or it should be so it should be comfortable for them and they will feel rather than uh, living in isolation it is uh, having a companion with him so together they will feel very good so we have to see in that we have to see how these animals are feeling if instead of alone alone means even even human beings if they are compared to live inside a house alone uh, and then away from their family and maybe other family members so it push sometime we get stressful because of that loneliness same thing happen in case of animals they also feel lonely so for the companions so now one step ahead said many countries are now devising very good comfortable uh, housing system for uh, animals so this i saw in south korea so this kind of this system was designed for the pigs and the cows you see this enclosure sometime uh, in our condition sometime uh, farmer themselves they don't have such a comfortable housing for themselves and so they will laugh at why to make such comfortable housing for animals animals you know we refer sometime as if animal is uh, not worth giving any good treatment this is what many people but if you look at the organic standards they always that the animal welfare oriented welfare is supreme under organic animal management so you, you you see the kind of thing this if you look at the future that we can think that many more comfortable housing system will be designed and in case uh, for the researcher also this is very good opportunity to develop very convenient comfortable housing designs and then we can they can get uh, copy patent for that and you can sell the idea about this housing which can, which is not very expensive and very uh, comfortable for housing so now you see enclosures have been made and they are kept inside and they have opportunity to move around similar with the with the poultry birds again they have here uh, pasturing uh, uh, opportunity they can come out of the enclosure and then go can they can go inside and sometimes these devices are portable also say huge big truck kind devices are there and these enclosures are transported to some other place so because because they might have pastured here there might not be enough uh, insect population to eat on so they they be, they are sometimes transported to different locations so if you look at if you look at the youtube videos how uh, poultry birds are kept under how pigs are and how cows are kept under housing systems various housing systems you can see and in the in the youtube videos where organic production of uh, pigs organic production of cattle and poultry production there are several videos now available where you can see and improve your own understanding of housing for the animals under organic management you see this is a very good housing system here so the, this is very this is very nice looking 
Sometimes we human being also do not have such a good housing system, but in case of organic management we are not going to discriminate. So, these uh, again this in, in, in comparison to in intensive pig production system, here is more open space and more freedom for pigs to make, make uh, to, uh, to live together in a group and they, because they are the herd animal they live they want to live together they are they are together and they are having some space movement and then they are not kept all the time in this enclosure in this particular they are they, they are taken out and they are taken out to the some area where they can move around and they can also uh, they can eat something of they say sometimes they like roots to eat and the dig, uh, dig up and find the roots. So, they like eating it that kind of a atmosphere can be provided under the housing systems. So, we have to see that now you look at this particular animal how much it is enjoying. If you tether this animal by a rope fixed to a pole it will not be able to move around much and it will be stressed. So, here it is having opportunity you know how it is jumping up. So, that freedom with this animal is enjoying. So, it is the, it is putting this animal out of the stress. This such animal will not be stressed and our lot of green is inside. So, they are able to graze out also. So, if you are not providing grazing opportunity all the time keeping your cattle tied up with a rope. So, it will be it will put that under the stressful situation. You see the environment which has been provided here this calf. So, they, they are out in the open with a lot of space wherein they are having uh, enjoying the freedom. So, if you are not uh, providing that freedom, so that is going to lead to stress. So, organic animal husbandry have the welfare standard. So, they say how they should be kept well. So, we should we should always try and try to design comfortable housing system for the animal whatever category of animal it is we have to provide comfortable housing system for them. Now, you look at this figure, you might be wondering why this pole is here. This pole is here, sometime cow want to scratch its back and because it does not, uh, she does not have a hand like us, we can scratch like that. But this animal, if this pole is provided, she can rub its back or neck like that, it is, she is rubbing her neck here. So, because she is feeling some kind of here, uncomfort here, she is rubbing it. So, so, if you are not allowing this, this, if this pole is not there, how this cow will feel? It'll, it, it, it will feel stressed that she feel like doing something and she is not able to do it. Also, we human beings sometimes we feel like doing something and we do not get chance to do it. How do we feel? Same way we have to feel about some dairy producers they are providing this kind of a combs you know that is a mechanical mechanized devices sometimes mechanized devices also. So, cow is enjoying so rub by the brush. So, how comfortable it will be there just think. So, it is captioned like I can groom myself as I want you just think about how much care the producer has taken to provide this kind of a uh, mechanism or device wherein otherwise if you think that if it is not there if she is feeling something to scratch hair and the tail. So, she will not be able to do it if this device is not provided. So, if this device see how it, it is comfort, she would like to do it whenever she feel like doing it, she will go there and she will do like that. Likewise this, you, you look into this, you look into this is rubbing. So, this kind of a welfare uh, kind of a mechanism we have to design for our animals in or the organic management system. Again coming back to this one how comfortably these cows are sitting here. You see some kind of a sunlight is also coming and the partial shade is also there and then also behind, behind that there is a shelter. Suppose, there is no rain, they are feeling comfortable here. So, they are feeling comfortable here, there is uh, uh, no problem for them. So, because if somebody wants that heat, uh, hot uh, sun direct sunlight, she come come out in this region. Otherwise, this shade is provided, they are out and open, they are getting fresh air they are getting sunlight, their shade is there and when rain is there, they can go inside, they can move that side. So, this is kind of a one of the ideal kind of a housing system for cows. Likewise, there can be another kind of a uh, ideal housing system for, uh, uh, for pigs. 
and then for the goats also. In case of poultry, you know, poultry, uh, poultry need to sometimes they go up in the perch, they want to go up in the tree, uh, small trees, you know. So, then the new now in the backyard poultry system and organic animal uh, poultry production system, these kind of a uh, mechanisms are made where from the port ho potholes they come out and they go into certain uh, distance and if they want to go, they want to go on the rooftop, they want to sit on the rooftop, they can go and the, they can enjoy there. So, if all the time if you are keeping under cages, so that will be un uncomfortable situation for them. So, again same thing for your uh, refreshing your th uh, memory. So, I am producing same slide again, organic animal production is welfare oriented, designing comfortable housing for animal is very important. So, we have to make, it is not that these are the only comfortable housing design, one can be creative enough keeping in mind the broad organic standards and housing standards which have been well documented, keeping that in mind we can also have, we can design houses. These are just kind of exam, few examples, we need not necessarily to make like that. If you go to rural areas, so sometimes they are very creative for the poultry housing they have designed. So, how they, they are, so, sometimes they will be more uh, welfare oriented. Sometimes we feel that farmers are not doing well, but they also do care well for this thing. So, apart from the, uh, we in this uh, presentation, I will talk a small about the waste management. You know, livestock production also results in lot of waste being produced. That is in front of the, uh, the cattle manure, maybe poultry manure, goat manure, it comes out. So, because when they are eating, they will excrete also. Excreta management is a very important area. If we are not managing excreta properly, so it pollutes, it, it pollutes, it degrades soil, it pollutes water and it leads to the deteriorated air quality. So, we have to pay very high attention to the waste, waste management. So, we have to remove waste immediately because the cattle shed or any kind of a poultry shed, it should be clean every time because if they are defecating on that one and then, uh, then all that is kept remained there. So, it will create lot of foul smell and un unhygienic condition. Sanitation is very important. Cattle shed should be very sanitized, they should be very clean. Otherwise, it will cause health problem. Health problem means that we will have to resort to the medication. Medications are very much restricted. So, we have to in the prevent for preventive health management point of view also, we have to take maximum care about the waste management. Waste should not be retained in the housing of the animals. So, we have to remove. So, once we are removing, what to do with that? Now, in case of cattle manure, cow dung, so, cow dung many people now they have started making vermicompost out of it and they can very good manure is being prepared out of the cow dung. Likewise, poultry dung, the poultry, poultry manure, goat manure can be converted into very good fertilizers by making, making them and passing through certain processes. So, we can sometime some technique like effective microorganism for rapid decomposing, sometime it is being mixed up with the plant material, vegetative, uh, some type of vegetation material, you know there is lot of waste uh, which is generated in agriculture production area. So, we say that a lot of uh, leaves and all kind of vegetables and all that kind of thing that can be crushed and can be made into very good manure together with cow dung. So, cow dung or other manure. So, that goes back to the field and it fertilizes the uh, uh, soil because you know that chemicals, chemical fertilizers are not allowed. Otherwise, if you are not fertilizing the soil, soil will be hungry and they are of poor quality. In the poor quality soil, there will be poor growth of the plant and poor growth of the plant will lead to the less production. So, how we can productively use waste for our agricultural production? So, how it can be recycled into? So, a lot of uh, literature is available on that, a lot of videos are available that how vermi compost, how vermi wasp can be made. So, worms, so this, uh, this uh, uh, worm, worms, the uh, worms, uh, they, they go around and then they eat the cow dung. Then, uh, then this can be converted into manure. So, we have to see into that how uh, uh, we can, we can do it the best possible uh, make uh, use of the. 
So, then organic livestock poultry products must manage manure such a way that it does not contribute to the contamination of crops, soil or water op uh, and optimizes recycling of nutrients. So, recycling of nutrients is very important. So, then otherwise if you are not managing it will have risk associated with uh, this related to soil water and air, uh, air quality contamination. So, we waste management is very important area uh, on the organic system of worms. So, as I was telling about the vermi manure, so earthworms are being used extensively now. The cow dung is being uh, fed to the earthworms and earthworms multiply and they make very good manure to be used in the organic farms. So, earthworm is also gives then we, we make several product out of the earthworms also. So, vermi wash is there which also nourishes the plant and then uh, vermi cast is there. So, several product earthworm look a very small uh, insect like uh, thing it looks like, but it has multiple uses and several products are being made out of the earthworm. So, that has that has been substantially helping organic production of the crops. So, that earthworm and uh, then uh, vermi manure made made using earthworm has become nowadays very important ingredients for the animal uh, this uh, organic farming. So, we have to see this one. So, keeping in mind the importance of the manure especially cow dung. So, several ministries are now involved in the programs. So, wherein they are coming up with the program with how to make best use of the cattle, cattle dung, cow dung. So, likewise Ministry of Drinking and Water Sanitation has launched Gober scheme, Gober scheme, galvanizing organic bio agro resources. Uh, this is uh, the Dhan scheme. The scheme is being implemented as part of the Swachh Bharat Mission. So, you might have seen, might have heard about Swachh Bharat Mission. You organize this uh, Swachh Bharat Mission programs and cleanliness drive you doing. So, in rural areas, so what is being done? The Swachh Bharat Mission comprises two main components for creating clean villages, creating open defecation free ODF. That is a very important program that is about a human excreta, how the, this we can avoid this open defecation can be avoided and this should be need to be eradicated that should not be there. So, and then managing solid and liquid based in villages. So, now the several districts are there saying then then over some some state governments are also buying the cow dung also from the, and then they are incentives are in, in incentivizing the farmers that by by buying the cow dung. So, so some state governments are doing it that. So, cattle dung how to make multiple use of cattle dung that is being thought of generally and just to make good use of the cow dung that is because at all management of the uh, waste. So, it is not waste. So, we sometimes we call this concept waste to wealth. So, there are many programs are going on about the making wealth from the waste. So, nothing should be considered as waste, everything has some utility, only we have to be creative enough that how to make good use of. That is true in case of the uh, uh, manures being produced by the different species of animal, how we can make best use of that one and for growing crops or uh, fertilizing the soil. Now, and so in this uh, presentation, I want to speak a bit about the labeling of organic products. So, organic products cannot be sold without label. So, it has to be properly labeled. So, organic have strict production and labeling requirements. These requirements are very strict. So, one cannot afford to be so negligent to the labeling. So, we have produced certain item following the organic standard and if I am not labeling it, so will I will not be able to sell it market as in the market as a certified organic product. So, in order to label a organic, as organic, the product must have the following characteristics, contain at least 95 organic ingredients. The remaining 5 percent must be allowed ingredients, any agriculture ingredients in the product must be organic unless unavailable. So, it should be as, as far as possible first it should be 100 percent, but sometime it happens when we are producing organic, there had to be some, some relief has been given that up to 5 percent we can have conventional ingredients into it, because these are sometime they are not available. So, it should be 5 percent entry in order to label it organic product, 90 percent of the these ingredients should be organic. And then 
it should be with no synthetic growth from hormones, no antibiotics, no pesticides, no biotechnology or genetic, uh, genetically modified organism, genetically engineered product uh, should not be there. Synthetic ingredients or irradiation uh, should, be, should not have been used in production or processing. At any level, these synthetic items should not be used. Hormones sometimes we are using in case of boosting the fertility of animals and uh, boosting the growth in case of livestock, sometimes antibiotics. There are some kind of uh, standards on how much antibiotic, under what condition we can give. So, pesticides are strictly restricted in the, in the this one we should not give for the control of external parasites. Sometimes we use the killing, pest killing and then say for example, to ticks, we use some chemicals to kill the ticks from the body of animals. Sometimes dewormers we give to animals. So, there are standards that under what condition we can give these uh, allopathic drugs. So, biotechnological and then GMOs, genetically modified organism, synthetic ingredients or uh, irradiation uh, should not be used in production or processing. We have to, while before labeling the product as organic, we have to keep in mind that we should be avoid these, these things. If you make a product and want to claim that it is it, it is or its ingredients are organic, your final product need to be certified. If you are not certified, you must not make any organic claim or use the organic seal anywhere on the package. So, if you go to market, if you look at the product, certified organic product, they are properly labeled. It gives the information about who has certified it. It has the logo of Government of India for Organic India and also sometimes Javik Bharat logo. So, all these logos are there which gives the confidence and which give the, which certify that the product is properly produced as per the in, in, in case of India and POP document in conformity with the standards these products have been produced. So, that sometime the consumer will feel satisfied that yes, some kind of a seal is there on the product, it has been labeled properly, it has been produced as per the organic standards. So, when a food or beverage product is labeled as organic, it means that the product has been grown, produced, examined and certified to be following the organic standard as mandated by the NPOP in India. This is in case of India because national program for organic production, it regulates organic production activities in India. And also, uh, we the under the uh, APIDA under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, NPA or NPOP operates where secretariat is located under the, the APIDA. So, then its NPOP standards are followed in case of in India. Also, we follow while importing the organic products inside that it should be in conformity with the guidelines of the national program for organic production. So, so we uh, as accordingly organic is labeled. So, so the before a product is labeled as organic, certification agencies visit the organic producer, they certify their claim, they see the records, the record maintenance, maintenance is very important under organic production system. So, they see the record, they verify it and they approve it, they give the compliance certificate, then only they are eligible to, uh, to, to put a logo into, in, onto the product. So, they before using it, then the product has to pass through this guideline. So, in case of and for several other countries, they have their own requirement. Any product certified to USDA organic standard is allowed to wear the USDA organic seal including food, clothing and personal care products. It should be having USDA organic standard to follow. So, they call it NOP standard as we call it in India and, and POP. So, in case of the uh, American uh, products the U United States products, they are given logos of the USDA certified organic seal. So, likewise in Europe, they have European Union guidelines for organic production are followed. So, they label it product as the European Union guideline for the organic production. So, no organic product in the market can go without the logos. So, in case of India, you see this is the government of India seal for or India organic logo. If any product, if you look at in the market, 
you will find this seal. If it is not there, do not believe that this product is organic product. This seal, when it is there and this logo is there in the product, then you can be confident that this is certified organic product which has passed through all the standard clearance by the certification agencies or by the audit or inspection agencies. And also you see the Food Safety Standard Authority of India, they have come out with the logo. So that is called Javik Bharat logo. Just to promote organic products nationwide, just to boost the production activity and all these things and to, to make organic product accessible to the consumers and with all the confidence. So, see this thing, they do have their own mechanism to verification that how the product is organic and how this thing. So, then the product certified under NPOP, they are given these logos. So, there is another system of production. So, wherein product are certified not by the third party certification by the participatory guarantee system. So, this is a guarantee system. It is operated by the national center of secretariat is located for the PGS certification in India. It is uh, NCONF, National Center for Organic and Natural Farming based in Ghaziabad where the secretariat for the PGS India is there. So, who this PGS India certified logo when it is there. So, this product means the product has been certified under participatory guarantee system. So, part, part, uh, participatory guarantee system certified products are available when it is there is a committee, there is a, it, it is a separate system of certification and it also follows the guidelines of the organic production, but it is not third party certification and this production is not kind of eligible for exporting the product. If your product is labeled at PGS certified organic, so it cannot be exported to other country. And then when it is uh, this one logo, India organic logo is there and we are having uh, the uh, with the arrangement with the importing countries that our standards are similar to their standards. So, conformity with the, these standards and we have uh, arrangement with them, we can export to only those countries. Say for example, many of the organic products produced in India because the Indian NOP standards and NPOP standards are very closely aligned with the European Union standards. So, many of our products are eligible to be exported to European countries. So, likewise we have to have negotiation with many other countries for the compliance of the standards, we, we are this one. So, we have to negotiate and we have to see how much close we are there. So, that is seen and then this one, this, this we can make. So, we are exporting with this proper India organic logo to the exporting countries. So, we have to see the labeling requirement also, it is very important uh, for the this one. So, again coming to the 100 percent organic, what does it mean? Raw or processed agriculture products in the 100 percent organic category must meet these criteria. What are these criteria? All ingredients must be certified organic. So, when we are making any product organic product and whatever ingredients are being used into this one, they should be 100 percent organic as I told previously, but any processing aid must be on the processing aid used into this one should also be organic. Product levels must state the name of the certifying agent on the information panel. So, these are some of the requirement which need to be complied with that may include organic seal or 100 percent organic claim must identify organic ingredients. So, when you look at any organic product, you will see the all the ingredients listed into it and then they will be 100, it, it will, when they are making claim these are 100 percent organic, then they, they should be mentioned in the label of the product. If you see the organic product, they are always properly labeled with the respective logos of the certification agency and the government of India uh, logo on it, sort of which gives the, gives it, uh, which makes it eligible for the organic product to be sold as certified organic. So, so if and then previously I told that if you are not having, there are certain allowances has been given into this one. So, so it could be sometime there is a freedom that it should not be naturally 100 percent organic. Sometime it happens that sometime some come the processing aid or some of the ingredients are not available organic uh, uh, in, in the organic uh, organic state. So, then we can use some kind of hint. So, even if it is 95, 95 percent, so we can we can say that even even then it can be said it is organic products that kind of because this is not not available. First thing that it should be 100 percent organic that is fine that everything all ingredient must be certified organic processing it certified 
product class must state the name of the certifying agent. These are the requirements. But sometimes the, their allowance has been given, as I told previously, that 95 percent if it is there. So, we can, we can make, still we can make it. Uh, so, it should contain at least 95 percent organic ingredients. So, it, it, this kind of, so we cannot be at the same time so strict when sometimes certain time some of the ingredients are not available. So, we, we cannot say that you, you cannot sell product as organic. So, this kind of uh, arrangement has been already made. So, so I, I talked about in this lecture about the kind of a living condition. So, which is high welfare oriented, how to keep them inside the house, how to feed them, how to take care of uh, their health. So, under the health there are different standards. So, maybe in some other lectures that will be covered how health care requirements on the organic system. Here I talked about the living condition. Living condition you can mostly come with the housing and then housing and then uh, one uh, how to keep inside house and then what to feed them. Feed has to be organically grown. So, there is uh, uh, the, the detailed they can be can you can look into further detail for other, uh, other maybe other uh, in the standards you can refer so what can be fed what cannot be fed what is allowed what is not allowed that detailed standards are available into the national program for organic production and pop document where the organic animal husbandry and, on, and animal and poultry standards are mentioned it in case you want to convert or switch over from conventional farming to organic poultry or dairy farming, you have to essentially refer to the NPOP document. I would suggest to you NPOP document was developed in 2000, 2001. So, then uh, when the NPOP was announced, then standards were developed in 2000, but they, these organic standards came into, uh, into force from 2002. Now, almost over 20 years, we are following NPOP document standards for organic production of crops as well as livestock products. So, we are following them. In case you have any idea to switch over to from conventional farming to organic farming including organic dairy and poultry farming, you have to refer. This lecture gives only a small idea where you can, you can look further information from the documents by watching video. You have to improve your own capacities. If you are a trainer, you after listening this lecture, you have to look into the various things because here everything has not been told. Only a, a sm some idea has been given, but in that document you will find find in the detail, det details of this one, details of housing, details of feeding, details of animal welfare care. So details of processing also. What are the processing aid? What are the ingredients? which are accepted under organic system for the processing of the organic product. So, I would, some, uh, I would suggest you and emphasize here that this lecture is not good enough to give you entire idea about living condition, waste management and labeling of the organic product. You have to look into the various document and the primary document is always I would say in case of India, this is nat national program for organic production wherein organic livestock and poultry standards are also included uh, uh, along with the crop standards. So, in case you are a honey producer, there are separate standard for honey bee, how to organic honey bee production. There is a standards for wild collection. So, different uh, different kind of a production system have been covered and NPOP document. That is a very good document which gives comprehensive idea about that. And when you are, uh, when you find anything difficult to understand NPOP document, you please refer to the experts. And there are institutions now. Their institution, National National Center for Organic and Natural Farming. There are expertise available where you can consult them. So you can also consult APIDA also for advice. You can take their advice because when it is a big task switching over from the conventional because our soil and we have been trained, we have been accustomed to conventional system of production where we have been using chemicals into the system where in growing crops and raising animals, we are using drugs and allopathic medicines. Here in case of organic production, these all things are very restricted and they are very well mentioned in NPOP document. Here again, I am emphasizing that please make it a point to refer to the document. So, you, 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 you to make yourself uh, more uh, 
aware about organic and whenever you need any particular advice that you can always refer to the institutions which are meant to train people, give guidance, technical guidance about lot of extension literature, package of practices are not available where, wherein as a farmer you can consult them and they are also available in local languages. Various states have developed package of practices for different crops, different horticultural crops, maybe spices, vegetables, how to grow them organically. Same with the livestock also you will find that information is available. In the YouTube videos are there, I, am, I would suggest that you can look into it. So, you, you, com you have all the compiled information with you because it is highly skill oriented, knowledge, knowledge oriented. It is, it is not so simple to switch over. There is conversion requirement. What is the conversion requirement? You have to read it. How much conversion, requirement, uh, conversion period is required for the converting to crop? annual crops, perennial crops in case of different species of livestock. So, you, you have to make yourself knowledgeable about all these kind of information beyond this lecture. What I believe before uh, uh, saying thank you to you for listening this lecture, I am also leaving uh, and completing my lecture with the advice that please refer to the document national Ag program for organic production which can be downloaded from the site of the agriculture and process food product export development authority apida that is under ministry of commerce and industry government of india based apida is based in delhi you can consult apida authorities uh, dealing with npop program for the for guidance and then how to get yourself certified and how to get in touch with the certification agencies finally i say thank you